This is a quick little video on how to test the electronics on a Hobart mixer. Pretty much they're all the same from the from the 30 quarts to the 60 quarts. You have a on-off stop-start button and a timer. The on button or start is what they call a momentary switch. It's normally open. When you push it, it closes the contacts. The stop is normally closed. When you push it, it opens the contact and shuts the machine off. The timer is an electromagnetic timer. One and two is your switch area. Three is the power for the timer. So you really only need to be concerned with one and two. If you think the timer is bad, you can actually jump it like I did in this case. And so when you push, you hear the contactor, which is up here, come on. And the button drops down inside. A push stop comes on. So basically, I bypassed the timer. So if you think that timer is bad and you turn it to hold or five minutes and it won't work, uh, you jump it and it works and you know your timer is bad. I'm going to leave the jumper on here for a couple other tests. Same way, you can take this and disconnect the power, and you'll want to use an ohmmeter with the, I like to use the one with the alarm. And what you can do is, I'm going to disconnect the power. You always want to make sure when you're actually testing the wires with the ohmmeter, have the power disconnected. Because what I'm doing is going to test the individual circuits real quick. Because normally a safety goes bad, or a switch goes bad, or the timer goes bad, or, or even one of the buttons goes bad. And usually not the motor. Or the contactor, it's usually a switch or wires come loose. In this case, right now I have this is the light red wires or your lid safety switch. I'm sorry, your 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 bowl lift that comes up from the bottom and it basically your bowl has to be in the full upright position to work. So when I hit this, you can hear beep. That means I got continuity, the switch is working. So if it works properly and I let the bowl down, it should turn off, which it does. Use that same method on both sides. You can do the same thing here with your safety cage. Your safety cage is a black and red wire that goes down into your switch, magnetic switch. You find those two leads where they connect here and here. One goes to the coil. Here we have continuity. So if I move my safety cage, it shuts off. So that's telling me my safety cage is good. You can do the same thing over here. On some models, they have a shift switch, and there's a detent right here, and when that's in the detent position, that means you're in one gear, and this should be closed. So if I were to put the meter on here, I'd hear it beeping, and as soon as I move, it would turn off. And again, with all these switches, if you're in a jam, you can bypass them. If you find this switch is bad, you can simply connect them together, okay, and that'll eliminate the shift switch. You don't want to do that for a long term if a safety feature is involved. And you, until you can get the part and then you can run it and go ahead and make the change. Same thing here. If you were to take on your cage safety and run a jumper wire from here to your coil, you're basically bypassing your cage magnetic switch. Same thing applies to the lift switch. On nice thing about Hobart, a lot of times they give you enough room. These are both quick connect couplers. You can disconnect it here and you want to keep the wire from the switch and basically put it right on your auxiliary and do away with the two red wires. If you need to you can always make a temporary jumper and that would allow you to do that as soon as you turn it on you would be bypassing uh, your systems and that's actually a real simple way to test each feature on the Hobart and try to figure out what's not working properly. Again you can also with the contactor contactors if they're 120 so whatever your power is here on these two leads Hobart jumps usually number two directly to the coil. See in this case we have a jumper goes here to power one side of the coil and your switch is powering the other side through all the switches. If you wanted to make sure your coil was making contact you can make a temporary jumper to here, plug the machine in and it should shut down. That's telling you that your contactor coil is actually working. If that didn't close then your contactor is bad. Same way applies with the overload. If when you're testing here and your machine's running properly, the, you should have continuity between these two sides. If this overload overheats and disconnects inside, this has like a switch mechanism inside, this will be open. Same way, if you find that this is open, you either have to have that. At that point, you're going to want to get an electrician to test the draw on the motor and see why your heater is going. It could be the heater itself going bad or you have, your motor's drawing too many amps and it's trying to protect itself by shutting down. So that's a quick little video on how to check some of the wiring on these Hobarts. It's not as bad as it looks, and I hope it helps you out. Thank you.